there are few men, whether living or alive or dead, who are considered quite as great as Nelson Mandela. And even Nelson Mandela acknowledged that he too had the potential to be a sinner, that he had the capability to do wrong. And it just goes to show that no matter how great a man is, they do have the capability to do evil. And even the worst of men have got the propensity to do good as well. And history is littered with men who were great, who fell from grace. People like Richard Nixon, Harvey Weinstein, O.J. Simpson. They are women too, believe it or not. And what is it that takes the moral compass from good to evil? Is it hubris? Is it greed? Is it money? Is it power? And that's what I'd like to explore. So if you look at Greek mythology and the story of Icarus, for example, Icarus' father fashioned him wings so that he could fly. These were made from wax and feathers, but his father warned him. He said, don't fly too close to the ocean and don't fly too close to the sun because you will be vulnerable. You will compromise yourself. But Icarus got complacent and he flew too close to the sun. The wax melted, the feathers fell, and Icarus fell into the ocean and into his death as well. And then, of course, there's the story in the Roman Empire of Carassus. And Carassus was the power and the wealth behind Julius Caesar. He was the one who funded, he was the George Soros kind of, of Julius Caesar. And he was extremely powerful, so powerful, in fact, that Julius Caesar actually gave him the governorship of Syria. But he then suffered a devastating loss to the Pantheon Empire. And what they did to him was they poured molten gold down his throat as an example and to allude to the fact that he was so thirsty for money. Such a great man who died such a violent, horrible death. So as a news reporter over the past 15 years or so, I've interviewed some of the greatest men and women in this country. Of course, there's Nelson Mandela and Desmond Tutu, but also some of the worst characters as well. There's a, a gallery of rogues, a cast of characters from brothel owners to drug dealers and smugglers to rogues and spies and spooks. There's also a great many newsmakers that I've interviewed who were great men or women and then suffered devastating falls from grace. And none of those exemplifies that as much as Jackie Salibi. So Jacob Seno Salibi was the National Police Commissioner of South Africa. He then became the head of Interpol, the most senior policeman in the world. And just to give you an illustration of, of how important he was, he was a member of the ANC's NEC. At one point, he was our ambassador to Geneva at the UN. He was also the guy responsible for repatriating exiles in the early 1990s when they were returning to South Africa. He was really well regarded and he was incredibly powerful. But it was his friendship with Brett Kebble, a modern day Rand Lord, a captain of industry that would prove to be his downfall. And what Kebble did was he would manipulate people using power and money so that he could capture them. And that's essentially what he did with the ANC Youth League, with these young Turks that he, he gave blue label whiskey and cell phones to, but also to Jackie Salibi as well. And he did this through Glenn Agliotti, who is a underworld middleman, a fixer, if you like. And Glenn Agliotti bought access to Jackie Salibi for Brett Kebble. That's exactly what he did. He used money and power, and this resulted in shopping sprees to Santa City, soft black leather size 7 shoes for the president, and then brown envelopes stuffed with cash being slid across boardroom tables. And that was how Jackie Salibi landed up falling from grace. He went to prison after being the most senior police officer in the world. For what? 117,000 rand. That's what he was convicted of taking. He gave up all of that power. And then of course there are those who do the corrupting like Kevil. Someone like Radovan Preacher, who is this Czech fugitive from justice, who landed on South Africa's shores in 2007 with a pseudonym of Jules Egbert Savvy and a disguise of a moustache and a wig. 
And he had mastered the art of state capture before we even knew what it was. He had captured the government in the Czech Republic. He then walked out of his villa outside Prague while the police were searching it, rode a bicycle to Poland, made his way through the Middle East, went to the Seychelles where he then befriended the president there and when it got too hot he had to move back to South Africa and he set about building an empire in South Africa. And how did he do that? He surrounded himself with the very best people in the underworld. He found the people who were the best in the country at money laundering or at drug, drug trafficking or tax evasion and he surrounded himself with all of these people and started to build a network and what he also did was he corrupted the entire police force in South Africa. And he did this from station level police officers to the most senior generals. So the head of the elite crime fighting unit, the Hawks in South Africa, was allegedly on his payroll. The country's most senior detective was allegedly on his payroll. The head of crime intelligence. And that's how he managed to evade justice for so long. And in his wake, the bodies started to pile up. And there were more and more murders that were being perpetrated in the underworld. And he just was never held accountable for any of them because it seemed as though he was literally getting away with murder because he had so many senior police officers on his payroll. And, and that's why we, we, we saw how, how excellent he was at PR. And that was his strength, is that he had exceptional PR. So he had really good publicity uh, with interviews where he had the aquarium behind him on premier investigative channels. Uh, he made sure that he had bulletproof glass around the, the restaurant where he used to frequent because he was concerned that he was going to be assassinated. There was the mansion in Bedford View in Johannesburg, the expensive cars. And that in the end was his downfall, the fact that he had so much publicity around him that the police eventually had to go for him because he had become the most high profile underworld boss in South Africa. And that was the only reason that he fell and that he is now in prison serving a 35 year jail term. And then of course, there is the incredible story of Oscar Pistorius who, the story is just made for Hollywood. You've got a boy who has no legs, who lands up becoming one of the fastest men in the world. He competes in the Olympics. He's the face of the Olympics in London in 2012. He is our good thing, our paragon that we parade on the world stage. And who can forget that day in 2013 on Valentine's Day when we heard that Oscar Pistorius had shot Riva Stienkamp. And he really suffered an Icarus-like fall from grace because he went from being the face of the Olympics to on the world stage, in front of the cameras, having to testify in court about how Reva Steenkamp died. And who can forget, I mean, I'll never forget sitting in court and watching Oscar Pistorius vomiting into the green bucket and the tears and the snot. And where did he land up? In prison, playing soccer with Radovan Krejcik. And that just goes to show, you know, where, where you have a story like Oscar Pistorius, where he had achieved the, the highest echelons of success, where he was one of the greatest men, not only in South Africa, but in the world. And he suffered this devastating fall from glory. And, and who knows why? Perhaps it was because he believed that he was invincible. Perhaps, you know, he, if you listen to how he testified in court, he believed that he was being targeted by an intruder. And then, if you gauge many South Africans, it's because he believed that he was going to get away with murder, that he was arrogant. Either way, it led to this devastating fall from glory. And, and when you look at these men that I've spoken about, whether you're the National Police Commissioner, whether you're Jackie Salibi, who is the most senior police officer in the world, who takes a couple of brown envelopes stuffed with cash and goes on a few shopping sprees for suits and, and leather shoes, or whether you are Oscar Pistorius, the Blade Runner, who has achieved such incredible success, who has really you know, managed to overcome such adversity, it just goes to show that even the greatest of men are vulnerable, that even the most good, the most honorable, the most 
the men who have the most integrity have a propensity to fall from grace. And it just goes to show that like Icarus, whether you are Jackie Salibi or Oscar Pistorius, if you fly too close to the sun, you too will fall from glory. Thank you.